All right, Bruno and I are back with another video. And uh, Bruno, what are you? What are we talking about today, huh? Bruno, uh, I think Bruno uh, wants to talk about non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, right? Bruno, is that right? Yes, it's right. <laughs> okay, Bruno, go ahead. All right. So yeah, that's what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, this is something that a lot of people are walking around with. Uh, they call it non-alcoholic fatty liver disease because in years past, uh, the, the people that usually got fatty liver were, were uh, heavy alcoholics. Uh, fatty liver or an excess of fat in the liver uh, is considered the first stage on the, on the road to liver failure. You get it's in order. You first to get fatty liver, then you get liver cirrhosis. Cirrhosis of the liver basically is where your liver is turning into scar tissue, fibrotic scar tissue, and then the uh, the liver cirrhosis can very easily turn into liver cancer, and uh, that's like uh, when that happens, you know, that's uh, your only hope is to get a liver transplant, otherwise you're dead, you know. So it's a serious thing. Uh, but I'll, I'll let me get into, let's talk about this non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. It's, it's becoming increasingly uh, common all over the world. In fact, they estimate that 25% of the people in the world have non-alcoholic fatty liver. In the United States alone, they estimate 20 million people at least are walking around with fatty liver and they don't even know it. Now, you know, the, the term fatty makes you think that maybe these people are all fat or obese. No. You can have fatty liver and be skinny as a rail. It has nothing to do, although having more body fat does increase your chances of getting non-alcoholic fatty liver, but you can still have it if you consume certain foods and, and, uh, and uh, do certain things, uh, engage in certain habits. You can still have an abnormal fat buildup in the liver. Fatty liver is linked to, uh, it is closely associated with obesity, type 2 diabetes, and other disorders that are characterized by insulin resistance. In other words, uh, fatty liver is, has a very close relationship with insulin resistance. Insulin resistance is often called pre-diabetes because uh, it tends to, uh, if you don't do anything about it, uh, having a long-term insulin resistance can very often uh, you know, evolve to full-blown type 2 diabetes. Now, what is fatty liver? Obviously, fatty, fatty liver occurs when too much fat builds up in the liver. Uh, it, it, you know, it's, it's normal to have a little bit of fat in the liver, but if you have, if the liver content of fat is more greater than 5%, you're considered to have fatty liver. Non-alcoholic fatty liver is the initial reversible stage of liver disease, as I said earlier. It often goes to undiagnosed. Again, a lot of people, they find it in routine examinations where Somebody might go in and have an ultrasound and, you know, suddenly it turns out that they have fatty liver. They didn't even know about it. Over time, it can lead to a more serious liver condition called non-alcoholic steatohepatitis or NASH. Now, NASH is a, is a little bit more serious than basic fatty liver because it involves greater fat accumulation and, and a greater a, a level of inflammation that actually damages the liver cells. This can lead to, again, you know, if that when that happens, you, you have... Uh, when the, when, the, when the liver cells start to get damaged, you get a buildup of scar tissue for fibrosis, uh, you know, and, and uh, that basically that's, again, that's cirrhosis of the liver. Uh, and again, you know, cirrhosis of the liver could progress to liver cancer, which is, you know, that could be deadly. You know, you could die easily from that. A lot of people have. Non-alcoholic fatty liver is also linked to an increased risk of other diseases, including heart disease, diabetes, and diabetes and kidney disease. Now, what's, what causes fatty liver? Obesity. Okay, you know, it's true. The fatty you are, the greater the chance you have of fat accumulation in the liver. See, here's the way it works with body fat. As long as body fat is in its more, more or less normal areas, like, for example, under the skin, subcutaneous, and that type of thing, uh, it's not really that dangerous. But when the fat starts to build up in areas where it's not supposed to build up, they call that ectopic fat deposits, now you're getting in trouble. And it, that includes the liver. You're not, you're not supposed to have a lot of fat in the liver. And it's estimated that 30 to 90% of people who are obese have non-alcoholic fatty liver. And it's, a, it's actually increasing in children uh, because of this current childhood obesity uh, epidemic. There's an epidemic of obesity. 
you're having kids uh, show up with fatty liver and type 2 diabetes at age 12. The reason for that is twofold. First of all, they're eating a lot of refined carbohydrates, especially fructose. Fructose is one, uh, has a huge proclivity to uh, you know convert into triglycerides, or fat in the liver. Uh, and secondarily, uh, they're not engaging in the physical activity that they should be. Instead, they're sitting in front of computers or playing on their cell phones or whatever. They're not moving. You know, the truth of the matter about fructose, a little known fact about fructose, you, you, or fructose, or whatever you want to call it, you probably heard a lot of bad things about it. But the, 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 the fact that you, ne the, the, truth, the truth about it that you never hear is if you're really active, if you work out a lot, if you stay physically active, engage in sports, fructose is not a problem because you burn it up. You burn it up as energy. It's only a problem when you're sedentary and it builds up, especially in the liver, and it can cause fatty liver. Now, having excess belly fat itself uh, is uh, related to uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver. Uh, in other words, uh, when I said earlier that, you know, you can have thin people who have fatty liver, well, they might look thin on the outside, but it, what they might have is a buildup of visceral body fat. That's the deep-lying abdominal fat that you can't see. This is the most dangerous type of fat of all, very closely related to non-alcoholic fatty liver, uh, di type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and cancer. Now, uh, you know, you've probably seen these people, if you go to the beach, you see a lot of people with skinny arms, skinny legs, and a big, fat, wide waist. You know, those are the ones I'm talking about. Uh, having a lot of fat on the, around the waist is a good indication that you probably have fatty liver also. Now, insulin resistance is also a uh, risk factor for uh, fatty liver. Insulin resistance and, and high resting insulin levels have been shown to increase liver fat storage in people with type 2 diabetes and the metabolic syndrome. The metabolic syndrome is a constellation of several symptoms, including high, high blood glucose, high triglycerides or fat, uh, wider waist, wider waist circumference, uh, and uh, elevated lipids such as cholesterol, all of which are related to the onset of cardiovascular disease and diabetes. Another cause of fatty liver, and this is pretty obvious, high intake of refined carbo carbohydrate. Refined carbohydrates cause a huge uh, uh, release of insulin. And whenever insulin is secreted in the, in the presence of excess calories, you have fat synthesis and, and the liver, and the insulin can also drive fat in the liver also. Uh, so uh, uh, if you have, uh, for example, sh drinking a lot of sugary beverages, sugar-sweetened beverages, soda, energy drinks, which are high in fructose, they've been shown to drive liver fat in children and adults. Again, you know, fructose has a special uh, proclivity to be converted into triglycerides in the liver. But again, again, I emphasize, if you're active, you move around, you work out, fructose is almost never a problem. It's only when, uh, when you're not active and when you don't exercise. Impaired gut health. Recent research suggests that having a balance in gut bacteria or problems with the gut barrier, also known as leaky gut, and other gut health issues can tr contribute to non-alcoholic fatty uh, uh, liver uh, disease development. Now, what's the symptoms? As I said, most of the time you don't feel anything when you have fatty liver, but there are certain symptoms that you might feel, including fatigue and uh, weakness, a slight pain or fullness in the right or center abdominal area, elevated levels of liver enzymes, including AST and ALT. Uh, I should also point out that uh, sometimes those, ele uh, those liver enzymes are actually elevated in people that work out but it's not released from the liver, it's released from the muscle. And if a doctor doesn't know that, he could suspect you of having fatty liver disease or other liver problems. Elevated insulin levels also are, uh, you know, symptomatic of fatty liver. Uh, and uh, if, it, if, it, if it progresses to NASH, which is the worst kind of fatty liver, you will note a loss of appetite, nausea and vomiting, moderate, moderate to severe abdominal pain, and even jaundice, which is a yellowing of the eyes and skin. When you have jaundice, that means the bile is building up. Uh, it's not circulating right. It's building up in the liver. And it's being deposited in areas where it shouldn't be, such as the whites of the eyes. And in the skin, you get this yellowish tinge. That means you're in big trouble as far as your liver goes. Now, what do you do to treat fatty liver? You want to lose weight. As you lose body fat, liver stores of fat will also decrease. While it would seem that dietary fat uh, is the consumed in excess would be the main cause of fatty liver, you know, fat, fat. Only 16% of liver fat comes from dietary fat intake. 
Most liver fat comes from fatty acids in the blood, and about 26% of liver fat is formed in a process called de novo lipogenesis. That's the conversion of carbohydrates into fat in the liver. And again, it's, uh, fructose has a tendency to do that when it's consumed in, in uh, superfluous amounts and when no physical activity is done. During uh, de, uh, de novo lipogenesis, excess carbs are converted into fat, as I said. The rate at which de novo uh, lipogenesis occurs increases with, with intakes of, of fructose, again, as I said. In one study reported in 2012 in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, obese adults who consumed a diet high in calories and refined, and refined carbohydrates for three weeks experienced a 27% increase in liver fat on average, even though their weight only increased by 2%. So refined sugars and fructose have a strong tendency to specifically increase liver fat. Studies have shown that consuming diets low in refined carbs may help reverse non-alcoholic fatty liver. These include low-carb diets, the Mediterranean diet, which I talked about in a previous video, and low glycemic index diets, meaning that low glycemic index would be not consuming refined carbohydrates, consuming carbohydrates that are rich in fiber that kind of uh, delays the insulin release so that you don't get a huge insulin release. 14 obese men with non-alcoholic fatty liver followed a Mediterranean ketogenic diet. After 12 weeks, 13 of the men experienced reductions in liver fat, including three who achieved complete resolution of fatty livers. Gone. Gone. What is a Mediterranean ketogenic diet? Basically, the Mediterranean diet focuses on fruits, vegetables, uh, fish, not much red meat, you know, basically natural, clean foods. And with the ketogenic diet, you uh, basically eat the same foods, but you keep a tight lid on carbohydrate intake. So it's basically a wider variety of foods, but still very low carbohydrate. Other foods that promote a redu reduction in liver fat include monounsaturated fats, such as found in extra virgin olive oil, uh, and uh, uh, what is this, uh, nuts, avocados, they also uh, promote liver fat loss. Whey protein. Whey protein has been shown to reduce liver fat by up to 20% in obese women. In addition, it may help lower liver enzyme, enzyme levels and provide other benefits in people with more advanced liver disease. So just whey protein alone is great for reducing fatty liver. Green tea. One study found that oxidants and antioxidants in green tea called catechins help decrease liver fat and inflammation of people with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Soluble fiber. Some research suggests that consuming up to uh, at least 10 to 14 grams of soluble fiber daily may help reduce liver fat, decrease liver enzyme levels, and increase insulin sensitivity. I should point out that 10 to 14 grams is still not enough fiber. You want to aim for at least 30 grams a day. There's two types of fiber, soluble and insoluble. Only the soluble fiber really has an effect on non-alcoholic fatty liver. But you want to have both so you get those 30 grams of uh, fiber. Coffee. Coffee can uh, also uh, reduce uh, you know, uh, or lower non-alcoholic fatty liver. Uh, it also has a preventative effect. Coffee is great to drink to help prevent non-alcoholic fatty liver. Study, uh, what about exercise? Studies have shown that engaging in endurance exercise or resistance ex training several times a week can significantly reduce the amount of fat stored in liver cells, regardless uh, of whether weight loss occurs or not. Even if you don't lose weight, just working out will reduce liver fat. In a four-week study published in the journal Hepatology in 2012, 18 obese adults with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease who exercised for 30 to 60 minutes five days per week experienced a 10% decrease in liver fat, even though their body fat did not change. I'm sorry, their body weight did not change. High-intensity interval training is one of the better ways to uh, reduce uh, uh, non-fatty uh, liver. It's also been shown to be beneficial, uh, I'm sorry, in a study of 28 people with type 2 diabetes, performing uh, high-intensity interval training for 12 weeks led to an impressive 39% reduction in liver fat. What is high-intensity interval training? Basically, it's where you alternate uh, uh, going really hard, in other words, getting your heart rate up really high, for about 60 seconds or so, then then lowering it, you know, slowing lowering the pace for about another 60 seconds or another two minutes, then raising the pace, alternating back and forth. That's high intensity interval training. It's the best type of uh, uh, exercise to lower or reduce liver fat. Are there supplements that can help reduce liver fat? 
Some studies have found that milk thistle, milk thistle is uh, very well known for helping liver function, uh, alone or in combination with uh, vitamin E. Vitamin E also in some studies seems to be uh, help uh, reduce uh, fatty liver or treat it. Uh, combining milk thistle and vitamin E can help reduce insulin resistance, inflammation, and liver damage in people with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Another supplement called berberine. Those taking 500 milligram of berberine three times a day at meals experience a 52% reduction in liver fat and greater improvements in insulin sensitivity and other health markers than other groups. Omega-3 fatty acids is found in fish oil. In a controlled 2015 study of 51 overweight children with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, the group who took DHA, DHA which is one of the two uh, omega-3 fatty acids, DHA is one of them, EPA is the other, the group who took DHA had a 53% reduction in liver fat compared to 22% in the placebo group. The DHA group also lost more belly fat, fat around the heart. A study of 40 adults with fatty liver, 50% of those who took fish oil in addition to making dietary changes, had reductions in liver fat, while 33% experienced a complete resolution of fatty liver. So fish oil is really good for treating fatty liver. The dosages of omega-3 fatty acids used in the studies were 500 to 1,000 milligrams per day in children and 2 to 4 grams per day in adults. As I said earlier, vitamin E in doses of 1,000 units a day or more helps prevent the progression of non-alcoholic fatty liver into, into NASH, which is the more severe form of, 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 of fatty liver. So there, the, the, there you have it. Uh, uh, I have a lot more to say about non-alcoholic fatty liver. Uh, it would take too long to discuss all the nuances involved in a video, but I'll, I will be writing about a lot of other uh, facts about fatty liver in my Applied Metabolics newsletter. As a matter of fact, if you want the best information on nutrition, exercise science, food supplements, which ones work, which ones don't, ergogenic aids, fat loss techniques that really work, anti-aging research, uh, exercise science, women's health and fitness, all of these are covered in my Applied Metabolics newsletter, www.appliedmetabolics.com. It's 40 to 50 pages every month, no ads, just evidence-based truth, which includes my 58 years of study and empirical knowledge. That is, knowledge that I learned in the trenches, in the gym. I'm not an armchair philosopher like a lot of these other people that write uh, digital publications. They don't actually work out themselves. I, I actually have been in there. I know what works. I know what doesn't work. And I'll be relating all this in my Applied Metabolics newsletter. If you uh, subscribe, I'll send you an uh, invitation to join my private Applied Metabolics Facebook page, where every day I post new information on nutrition, exercise science, general health and fitness, and medicine. Uh, also, I have an email portal on my Applied Metabolics website. Current subscribers only can send me short questions, which I'll be happy to answer. Only current subscribers. I don't respond to questions submitted, uh, unsolicited questions submitted by non-subscribers. You're welcome to leave uh, comments under this video, suggestions for future videos. I can't guarantee I will respond to questions left under the videos since my subscribers always come first. I appreciate their support of my work. So I may or may not answer questions left under the video, but you're welcome to leave comments or, as I said, suggestions for future videos. <clears throat> so, that's about it. Uh, uh, you know, you want to have the best friend you ever had. You saw my best friend, Bruno. Uh, go to your local shelter, adopt a dog. There's a lot of loving dogs that are waiting for you there. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, as I've said in past videos, there's no loyalty that you will ever experience in your life that, that, you, that, that you will get from anything, anyone, any being other than a dog. Dogs are loyal from the time you get them to the time they leave you. Oh, when I say leave you, I mean die, because they usually don't leave you on their own. They're your best friends. They, they accept you 100% no matter what you look like, no matter what kind of person you are. They're the best. As, as I said, humans, sadly, humans will always let you down. Not all of them, but a lot of them in your life will let you down, uh, just disappear on you, whatever. Uh, but a, a dog will always remain loyal. So go to your local shelter, save one of these just loving animals. They're great. I wish I could save every one of them. I really do. They're great. Take care. Thanks for listening.